Welcome back to Latin 4. This is lesson 108. It begins on page 213. The value of minor clauses, uh, dependent clauses. Uh, dependent clauses may be used with any one of the following values. That is, they can be used in the place of a noun, uh, in the place of an adjective, or in the place of an adverb. And you can see how uh, they do that by, by looking at those as examples. So, for example, uh, as a value of a noun or an object or a positive, imperavit ut in castris uh, remanerent. He ordered that they remain in the camp. So you can replace it with a pronoun. He ordered this. So that whole clause, you know, is being used as uh, as a noun, as it were, as an object. We have the value of an adjective when they when they add something to the noun. So for example, fundus quia sinagro. Uh, the estate which is in the field. So instead of saying this, the estate which is in the field, you could say the blue estate or the white estate. It's it's modifying a noun. And with and again with an adverb, if it's changing, adding something to the verbal idea, cum id nuntiatum esset maturavit. When this had, he, it had been announced, he hastened. So you could say then he hastened. You could use the adverb then as opposed to this whole phrase. Um, and so it's being used as a adverb. A sequence of tenses. Uh, here's what you need to know. Just go right to the table on the top of page 214 and see your list of the principal tenses and the historical tenses. Um, what you can see is that the principal tenses, or start with the historical tenses. The historical tenses are everything with perfect in the title. Imperfect indicative, perfect indicative, pluperfect indicative, imperfect subjunctive, pluperfect subjunctive, except that the perfect subjunctive is a principal tense, also called a primary tense. These are also called the primary and secondary tenses. So uh, you need to learn these uh, two columns. I've just given you the easy way to remember it. The only thing with perfect in the name that belongs in the first column is the uh, perfect subjunctive. This is important to know because read the explanation there. If the main clause has one of the principal tenses and the minor clause, the dependent clause, requires a subjunctive, it's going to have to be the present subjunctive or the perfect subjunctive because those are the only principal tenses that have subjunctives. Likewise, the main clause is one of the historical tenses, and the dependent clause requires a subjunctive. Only the imperfect or pluperfect subjunctive can be used. So principal tenses uh, govern, if you've got a principal tense in the main clause, you've got to have a principal tense in the dependent clause if that requires a subjunctive. Uh, and likewise, historical, historical. Um, this next section, you have these connectives and compound sentences. The main clauses of a compound sentence are united in the following ways. By a coordinate conjunction, such as et, also. Um, but then by certain particles used correlatively, uh, some of which are. And so you've got some little vocabulary here. Um, uh, at one time, at another. Uh, in one place and another place and, and so forth. As you can see, they, they, uh, the meaning of them obviously conveys the idea of balance. So these are coordinate conjunctions. They're connecting uh, clauses that are coordinate, uh, so two main clauses. So for example, let's take a look at page 215 in the exercises. Try to work those out on your own. Kaiser. Alias territando, alias cohortando, magnum partum galei in officio tenuit. So Caesar, where's the verb, tenuit, held, what's the object, magnum partum, the greater part of Gaul, in duty, to, held it to its duty, or in his office. Alias territando, alias cohortando. Some by terrifying, uh, the other part by uh, exhorting, encouraging. Two. Meus dolor non modo non minuit, minuitur, sed etiam augetur. So my pain, 
not only does not diminish, but even grows, but even augments. Three, ego secutis aliad concilium sum, siwe hoc recte, siwe non recte. I secutis sum, that's uh, perfect tense. I have followed a different plan, siwe hoc recte, whether I have done this rightly or not rightly. So there you have it for lesson uh, 108. Uh, brings us to the end of this lesson. And again, for the rest of the book, each lesson is going to be like this. We're just going to be kind of focusing in on a different kind of clause. And then by the end of the book, uh, we will have uh, done all there is to do uh, as far as learning new kinds of clauses. And we'll be ready to move on to reading some unabridged Latin.